everybody and welcome back. It's time to start adding some more features to our map. What do we need to do? Well, what if we need some lines? I'm thinking we need uh, roads. We looked at creating polygons for both the main land mass and for islands, and in order to create those we'd use the pencil tool. And as we noticed, when you complete a loop and go back to your starting point with that pencil tool, that you can create not just a line, but something that is a polygon. Well, let's look at just basic line creation. Well, let's do that uh, by creating some roads. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it roads. By the way, you can always see and adjust what particular color you would like for the objects in a particular layer to highlight when you select them by here, and you can change that inside this menu as well. I've got a lot of things that are turning blue. For the sake of something different, I'll say that this uh, features inside this road layer will turn yellow. We'll see if that works. That doesn't have anything to do with the artistic representation. It just has to do with what color they turn when you select them. So let's say I want to draw some roads. Well, I could draw some roads with the pencil tool. We're familiar with it. You know, if I've got this windy road here, there we go. I can draw it out like that. Let me show you there. That's just a line. That's not an enclosed polygon. So I've got a color for the stroke here, and notice there is no fill color right here. What happens if I decide to give it a fill color? Just this pink here, okay. Now look at that. It did fill it in, but this side is open. It's not a closed polygon. So that's what happens when you try to fill in a uh, just a line. You can do it, and hey, it might be exactly what you need in order to achieve certain effects. But that's just an open form uh, without this closing side right here. And by the way, when I have a form like this selected, I can select it right there, and then if I go over here, notice the change in the cursor to the uh, double-headed arrow right there with the arc. Once I've got that, if I'm over here on one of the edges, then all I have to do is hold down, and then I can rotate the form that I have selected. So that's very handy to be able to do. You can also scale if I wanted to push this way, then I can sort of scrunch up that form, or if I want to drag back out, I can extend that form, or if I go here, I can sort of scale it up and down in two different directions. So that's a fantastic way to manipulate different forms. So that's the, a little bit more to the, uh, the pencil tool right there. Let me also introduce you to the line tool. Notice I can hold down and get to arcs and spirals and also rectangular grids and polar grids and so forth. But I can go uh, line segment tool and then I can draw lines and it keeps them straight. So this way I don't have to worry about using the pencil tool and trying to draw a straight line. Illustrator will help me make sure that I draw a straight line. Also very handily, what happens if I want to make sure that I'm drawing a line that is straight vertical or straight horizontal? Well, Illustrator will help you out with that as well. All you have to do is hold down the shift key as you're drawing that line. So here's just drawing the line out with the ordinary line segment tool. Now I'm going to start drawing a line and then I'm going to hold down shift. Now notice how that snapped to that particular angle. Here is a straight up line, here is a 45 degree angle, here is straight horizontal. Notice it'll go any direction that I want it to go. And if you hold down the shift key, then it snaps to one of those angles. So it makes it very easy to make sure that you're drawing uh, a straight line, uh, vertical, horizontal, or uh, at a 45 degree angle. So there's no guesswork involved in that. I'm going to select all of those and press the delete key to get rid of them. And then I'm also going to introduce you to this pen tool right here. The pen tool is also going to be one of your best friends as far as cartography goes. The pen tool allows you to specify nodes in a line or for a polygon. See here is a line I've got here. And then I'm going to draw another one and I'll show you how to connect it go back to your starting node and now I've got a polygon I'll give it my pink color you can see that's an open form there's no 
line uh, segment right there on the stroke. Go ahead and make that, uh, whoop, go ahead and select it and make it clear. So the pen tool is another fantastic way uh, to create lines exactly where you want them to go. There's going to be a lot of times in cartography when you need a line to go from point A to point B exactly. Well, don't freehand it in. You would use the pen tool in that kind of situation in order to shade in a particular region. If you're familiar with doing digitizing in uh, analytical GIS software, they use something very, very similar oftentimes to the pen tool to create the geometry of the shape files. While I'm on the subject and we're talking about all these different nodes in here, I want to bring your attention to the difference between hard select and soft select. Well, actually, this is just called the selection tool technically, and this one is called the direct, select, the direct selection tool. But somewhere in my Illustrator training, I picked up the terminology that this is called the hard select. The black arrow is hard select and this white arrow is soft select. I don't know where I got that from, uh, but that's sort of the terminology that I use, even though apparently it's not the official Illustrator terminology. But I want to show you the differences between hard select and soft select, as I'll probably call them as we go forward here in the tutorials. Let me zoom in on this shape that I created. And I'm going to just hold down the space bar so I can pan and center it. Now what happens if I grab the hard select tool and go over here and select this form? The entire form is selected and I can do exactly the different kinds of operations I was showing you previously. I can go over here and I can rotate it and I can scale it and so forth because I've selected the entire object. So what does soft select do? Well soft select is not going to select the entire object when I select it. So let's take a look at what happens when I make a soft select. This is hard select, okay? This is soft select. Notice that I don't have that bounding box when I use soft select. Instead, what's happened is all of the different lines and all of the different nodes that compose the geometry of this form that I've drawn uh, are highlighted. So now, I can move the form still, yes, but there's really no way for me to expand it or contract it or manipulate it or rotate it because I'm selecting all the different nodes. This ability to select individual nodes is very and a very important part of the soft select tool. If I come here and I grab this anchor point, that node right there, let me zoom in again so you can tell the difference between that node and the other node. Maybe yellow was a bad choice of colors. Let's use... Um... Ah, you can see the, the purple. Okay, see that purple line in here? Whoop, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back over here and soft select that one particular node. Notice the difference between that node and that node and that node and this node, well, and that one too. See how the interior of that node is white? You can probably barely see it. I hope you can see it. But this node right here, the one that I did the selection on, is filled in, filled in solid purple. They were filled in, uh, or that one was filled in solid yellow a moment ago, and these were yellow with a white center, but they were difficult to see. So I, right now, using soft select, I have just selected that node. Now I can come in here and I can grab that node, and I can just adjust it. This is very, very handy, especially in cartographic applications where if I need to adjust exactly where a particular uh, line segment goes or to try to get a, a particular point, I don't have to come through here and I draw it perfectly the first time. I can go in and I can use the soft select tool and I can select an individual node. See right here, none of the nodes are selected. I'm going to select that node with my soft select. Now it's selected and I can come into here and I can drag it wherever I want to go. Very, very handy for very fine manipulation of particular geometry that you're trying to work with. All right, so let's employ the line segment tool and also the pen tool and those techniques that we just learned in order to create some uh, rivers, some streams, and maybe some roads uh, here on our map.